Hello, everyone, and welcome to Erotic Book Club, the book club where we read erotic books. I am your host, Jess Ross. With me for the first time is my lovely fiance, Caitlin Thompson. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Kate. <laughs> Reka Hi. could not be here today. She is filming a super secret fun project for Dropout. Uh, so we have Caitlin here. Yeah. Yeah, you may remember <laughs> her from uh, Vikings in Peace, the blanket story. This is her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fun, right? <laughs> Um, uh, thank you so much for being here, You're for welcome. listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You may be listening uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. You may be watching on uh, CH2 on YouTube. Or our favorite way for you to be joining us is on Dropout. Uh, if you subscribe to Dropout, uh, not only do you get to listen to this first two weeks in advance, but you also get to check out all the other cool stuff we have on there. Uh, Troopers just launched, which is really fun and exciting. That's one of our biggest series and the director of Troopers is here who you'll meet in just a moment. Uh, we also have Paranoia coming out, uh, Allie's new show, so that's very exciting. And another great part about Dropout is you get to be on the Discord. It is a channel where you get to talk to us directly uh, and it really makes you feel like you're a part of our erotic book club. So I have some of our book club members uh, some little quotes from them from the Discord. Chloe said, Ah, the Alfie app was so very good. My inner D&D nerd was... Uh, uh, oh, crap. I can't read my own handwriting. Retching? At some of the very wrong halfling facts, but I did laugh my ass off. There was a lot of uh, comments that the halfling facts were incorrect. I publicly apologize. Had I known <laughs> Teo had such little knowledge of halflings, I would have never allowed him to sit on my luscious uh, chairs. So... My apologies, sincerely. Uh, Cody G, uh, this was about the average penis size discussion that we had. Uh, we thought around five to seven. I'm screaming. That's pretty wildly inaccurate. That's some porn shit right there. Laugh my ass off. Uh, and as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, I bet there's a lot of things that I think are facts but aren't. So you're right, Cody G. Uh, Is anybody taking... You're fat, like, is that nobody's fact checking you on top of that? Uh, in, you mean in the company? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they let me say whatever I want. Um, I'm sorry for all the wild inaccuracies of our uh, highly educational podcast. Uh, and then Jimbles, uh, if you get dr drop out for no other reason, please get it for this beautiful fan art that Jimbles made uh, in the Alfie episode, which was a big hit and people are asking for a second one and we're going to do that because it sounds fun. Uh, but Jimbles created this beautiful uh, pic of Al Alfie's gaping asshole uh, and put the first picture of a black hole inside of it and it's just divine so please subscribe to dropout get over there uh, and I keep an eye on the CH2 comments as well from Aaliyah E uh, on the stress treatment episode, since that came out a bit later, uh, I wish I were a sexy lesbian doctor. I love this podcast so much. Thank you, and I wish that for you too. Good luck. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Someday. If you keep trying, you can make anything come true. Yeah. Yeah. Enroll in lesbian medical school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, enroll in lesbian. Eight years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that leads us to today's discussion of Superman stole my panties <laughs> by kiss my oops <laughs> uh, you know we needed to bring in some experts to really delve into this one uh, so we are so lucky to have with us today um, a forensics expert uh, which is a big part of the story we have with <laughs> us my dear friend Alex hello yes I am a expert in forensic science <laughs> uh, and I look forward to maybe Illuminating some of the uh, <laughs> the tactics used by the bad guys in this in this book, Thank which you. I don't like to call it a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blog. <laughs> it's generous to call it a it's book a for sure. Uh, yeah, and then over here we have our superhero expert Ryan. 
I'm screaming. Like yeah, a comic. screaming already <laughs> internally. Already screaming. I'm very much a, a comic uh, expert, even though my knowledge comes from mostly movies. Sure. Um, That's where comics were born. Yes, and there's no way to check if I am or am not an expert. Um, so I am. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Uh, if you did not have the joy of reading this uh, potential book, um, I'll share with you some of the characters. We have, of course, in the title, Superman. Uh, which is a, we'll mm. get into that if he's even Superman. Mm -hmm. We have Donovan, uh, a guy who works at McDonald's, with our leading lady and panty owner, Avery. Uh, we also have Avery's grandma, who plays a very big role. We have Karen, Avery's shrill BFF, Avery's words. Uh, we have Josh, her ex. Uh, we have Jake, who I forgot to write down, yeah. who is her uh, future potential boyfriend. He's a boyfriend by the end of it. And Bentley, who's a bit of the bad boy of the story. Uh, so our story begins. We uh, It's a news report about a crime that has happened in town. Uh, there's some type of robbery, somebody's fleeing the scene. But we also catch glimpses of uh, our superhero, Superman, but he's not quite Superman. He's in all black. Mm -hmm. He's dressed like a criminal. Yeah, he's dressed yeah, like a criminal. Bag, he yeah. has like a mask on with then a green slash on his back. So he's wearing like an outfit, but there's an outfit underneath as well. Yeah, and they couldn't tell if it was his skin that was green or yes. if it was like some sort of fabric. Yeah. And that that never gets addressed. If he was a lizard person. <laughs> yeah, I was or... hoping his like face and his hands seem to not also be green. Yeah. 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 Uh, is that common for the Superman lore? No, he's famously <laughs> not green. <laughs> Her very first note on this page is Superman green. He, like green kryptonite is his like biggest weakness. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like, even though it's not, they're not presuming that it's kryptonite, but it just is like uh, like remarkably not Superman. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anti Superman. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. I mean, I would venture to say that this does not look like any superhero that exists. What about the Green Lantern. He's fully green. He's what? Got, like black, but he's got like I guess he's got like green throughout, you know. And he's got the green glowy ring that you can't miss. I don't this guy know. had no rings, to my knowledge. Yeah, I mean, she, I guess she was trying to look, go for a unique look of a superhero. And, but then she well, called case, him Superman. It. Yeah, like <laughs> if she was going for a unique look. <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> okay. Perplexing. <laughs> Um, so the news report is happening. Then above in the rafters of the news studio, we see that the green slash Superman is watching all of this happen. Uh, and he refers to himself as a freak, a reject, a nobody with a strange mutation. Mm, freaky. But not a, <laughs> but doesn't he, is that's where he clarify? It's not a physical mutation. It's an internal one. Yes. Internal, that, yeah. Yes. An internal. So still physical. I just wanted, I wanted to unpack that for a second. <laughs> Sure, of course. Because, so in, in, okay, so an internal mutation not being physical still, where is the space internal that he's referring to? Alex, right? I don't soul. even know what you're asking. In the right soul, now. it's inside a his soul is his soul. shirt. His soul, he's what, dark. The inside of his shirt. The inside of his shirt, <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's slashed. So. <laughs> he is referring to how his shirt got messed oh, okay. up and slashed. I meant to say inside. That makes sense. Shirt Thank you inside. for clarifying that. Okay. This is why we have experts, experts here. On hand. <laughs> um, then we, that chapter ends. Then we meet our <laughs> leading lady, Avery. Yeah. Uh, she works at McDonald's. She has a coworker named Va Donovan, and they have a very flirtatious relationship. Yeah. But in kind of not like a cutesy way, mm -hmm. it's just flat out, do you want to go in my car and fuck? Into my Immediately graphic. Yeah. I need and to unload. <laughs> <laughs> I believe is what he said to I wanted, while <laughs> clocked in at work. And yeah. it wasn't like a pun about like we have like product that we need to unload or so. It wasn't no. like Which while would be acceptable yeah, at sure. work. If it's yeah. a pun, fine. My balls are right. full. <laughs> They need to unload. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is like her. Well, she also talks about her manager, Ronnie. Oh. Um, her being at the register, the reason was because I was a cute face paying customers like to see and too inexperienced to handle the drive through at dinner time. So, and she says, I was satisfied with the former, but annoyed with the latter, to say the least. So, like, yeah. She's like, she makes a lot of excuses for some shit that 
the dudes say throughout the whole story. A- everyone, her employer and coworker. Yeah. Her every love interest or, we or can potential. Get love into this was a very difficult book to read. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, long. What was one thing, but also I think this person's maybe understanding of the world felt a little off. And then we did come to the conclusion that maybe this was written by a teenager. A hundred percent. Which I'm I liked. like 99% sure that this Reading it through those eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and looking at it from that point of view, it's like, it makes total sense. And it is like an encapsulation of what being a teenage girl is like in 2011 when this was written. Like, she puts up with a lot of shit and like feels a lot of guilt for stuff and like is still perplexed by being like attracted to these guys who also scare the shit out of her Mm -hmm. and gaslight her and fucking like just make her feel like garbage and yeah man i think i think like it's a real obviously like a really enthusiastic author who like produced a ton of pages for this like you know is writing and writing and is like does like a lot of things really successfully but like just her point of view is still very like narrow to I don't know, her high school and like that's for her. I'm sure that this is her experience. I'm sure that this is like some shit that dudes have really said because dudes have said similar shit like this to me, like at work. You know, I've worked with like creeps who say shit like that. Who needed it to unload. Who <laughs> needed it to unload. <laughs> <laughs> A lot, so especially trendy. in high school, especially if you're working at like, I worked at a st- that was like this, or you know, I, another like, that's just where I was. I worked at a coffee shop that was, uh, sorry. I worked at a coffee shop where like, that was the general demeanor of a of a dude who was a manager there. And Damn. He was, yeah, like this shit, you encounter this at shit. Oh, th- at a coffee shop, <laughs> they want to see a pretty face up front? Um, I mean, that's like the kind of stuff that this dude would say, you know, it's like, it's, I, it was probably around the same time, like 2011. Also, whoa! I was like, did a little you older. write this? <laughs> I'm kiss my oops. <gasps> oh, Ooh. Wow. K for Kate. No, Kate. please. Kiss. I, I want to distance myself far, far, far away from from ha- any claim of having written it's this. It's too late. We're cutting that part out. <laughs> um, K for Kate. So there, uh, yeah, a bit of sexism happening at work. A lot of sexual harassment yeah. happening at work. Um, but Donovan overall doesn't seem like he's a terrible guy. No. Uh, so a man is in the McDonald's. He has had an issue with his order. He thinks his drink is wrong, and then he ordered French fries and didn't get them. This escalates very quickly <laughs> into him <laughs> grabbing Avery and holding a gun to her head, yeah. uh, which was horrifying. This part was so scary. Yeah. Uh, Luckily, there's a slash green man in town who comes in. Slash green man. <laughs> slash, green slash green man. man. Slash from Guns N' Roses. Yeah. <laughs> comes in, it's takes him here. out, uh, and then the the day, and then leaves just as quickly. No one knows quite what happened. Um, and then Avery sits on Donovan's lap while the police uh, yeah. take their. Uh, could you imagine after you've just been attacked sitting on somebody's lap and then talking to the police about what happened? For like hours too. I think they yeah. waited until like the sun came up or something. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was supposed to be comforting, but I would just find that very, I'd be like, ma'am, all these other empty in seats chair, in McDonald's at 3 a.m. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody else like finished their food. <laughs> <laughs> I still got thir- 13 nuggets left. I ordered 20 pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta finish my. I, got, I, I paid six dollars for these. I'm not gonna not finish thirteen chicken nuggets. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. so these things are done. All my sauces are open. I can't just take them out of the restaurant now. I got two honey mustards going. <laughs> I got two honey, and they charge you extra for those. <laughs> I got four dollars worth of sauce over here. I'm gonna eat them all. They better not charge me for sauce. Uh, uh, restaurants are a big part of this book as well, which is something Huge. I loved about it. They bring up all the great chains, Olive Garden, Red Robin. Uh, Friendlies. Friendlies. Yeah. It's not which, all the great chains. I mean, there's Red Lobster. There's, we're missing a lot of They like, go to Red, they Lobster. Go to Red Lobster. Lobster. She'd never been before. <laughs> yeah. He's like, do you like seafood? Alex has nothing left to say. Yeah, that was it. the only I note. I to make sure that they got shouted out. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> this had a pretty good, She so she's got some like, 
pretty good writing throughout, kind of like smattering throughout. Oh, like yeah. she's got a lot of problems with like. Uh, like a couple problems of like mixing tenses and stuff like that. Like, you know, like she's a teenager and it's kind of like grammatical errors, stuff like that. Like something that if she, when she goes to school for it, she, they'll like teach her that shit, right? And then, uh, but she did write like, sucking in air, I wrapped my hands around my neck. The ghost of his arm lingered around my neck as my heartbeat steadied out. Like she has some cool <laughs> shit. Yeah, when I, I like, read that line and uh, and made a note, I was like, that's actually like a, Beautifully written sentence. Yeah, and she like has something a, I'd say to Red Lobster. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. Stuffing <laughs> cheddar bay biscuits in my face. <laughs> yeah. So most of his own, dipping them in two honey mustard. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. Where'd you get those? Otherwise, they're so dry. Mm -hmm. um, she goes home. That's when we meet Grandma. Uh, she goes up to her bedroom. Can Grandma's. I, we don't learn Grandma's name, right? She's just grandma. just grandma. She's got a lot of typical grandma things. She has dentures. She keeps on the side of her bed. She's old. She's sickly. Oh, Avery she is an orphan. Machine. She uses a CPAC machine. She does? Yes. The cops didn't have like an EMT look at her or anything like that. Yeah, she's I don't know if fine. You to. She's fine. She's probably faking it. Where's yeah, my good night hug? Fuck that you, they Donovan. Didn't, they didn't dispatch like a forensics crew to like analyze the scene, the Whoa. crime scene at all. I mean, there could have been like a spatter pattern from the from the gun <laughs> hitting her head. You know, it's a, a spatter pattern is is like the pattern of the blood as it like hits a surface. Damn. And like you can determine the trajectory of the weapon and the uh, the weapon used uh, based on the spatter pattern. I so they should have deployed it. You learned right. that at lesbian forensics school. Yeah, I did. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, yeah, in the Isle of Lesbos, off of, <laughs> off of uh, the uh, coast of Greece. <laughs> it sounds. It's like not an accredited know. school. <laughs> get that out of the way right now. Why not? It's not accredited. Oh my god, this book is so long. We gotta get our ass. Okay, moving. sorry, sorry. Uh, so we get our first. In she goes up to her bedroom to go to bed, and we get our first encounter with her in the Green Lantern. He allows, or whatever the fuck <laughs> his name is. They always. Hanging upside he drops down, in like isn't he? Spider Man. He? Yes. So he's Spider Manning on top of her bedroom. And she looks up and she goes, oh, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is your expert experience uh, as far as... Does Superman typically hang yeah. upside down? As an yeah. expert, is Spider-Man <laughs> Superman? That's one of the first things you learn when I went to lesbian superhero college, yeah. um, was that one superhero Sign is typically up. not another one. Sometimes it does happen. There's a lot of crossovers. I don't think that those do, and here's where I don't know anything <laughs> about comics, like, that, those are also two different properties, like being DC and Marvel, yeah. so... Hmm. Um, but also in the way that they're superheroes, those are, like, not... Very different dudes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Very interesting. He later, at one point, uh, sh she like says, like, what are we in, like, a comic book? And he goes, what am I, Spider-Man? So he says it at some point. But he says that his spidey sense is tingling. Yes. He says, my he spidey sense is tingling. Which Spider-Man movie <laughs> came out closest to this, 2011? Oh. Uh, what are we looking at? The third? I think that whole first Rainy? trilogy was already out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I think we're in the... Uh, the in between one years, the ones that really yeah. nobody cares about. It's closer to the uh, Andrew uh, Garfield ones. Yes, I bet. and Emma Stone. A dark time. <laughs> A dark time. Uh, he <laughs> and she is very frightened that he's in her bedroom. He visits her bedroom numerous times, and for the bulk of them, she's terrified. She's like, "Please get out! Please leave!" Uh, he's basically like, "Go try to tell the cops. What are they gonna do?" Oh. It's very difficult to read. It's like scary that this young woman has somebody in her bedroom. And then we find out too, she's in high school. So we're not quite sure of her age up until now. And I'm like, oh my God, I just didn't like it at all. Not yeah. to harp on it a ton, but it's I mean, creepy. It, it happens in every chapter. Somebody says, a, a male character says something creepy and condescending or outright insulting. And it's like, and she's like, yeah. And then like, she carries that over and like talks shit with Karen about like other sluts in their high school. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, you, you're internalizing chapter, this yeah. shit. Does Big she time. like her friend Karen? She is so mean to Karen. And Karen is very caring and yeah. loving to her. She's like, I Avery's, pretended to care as if I could. It's like, wow. My shrill friend, I could hear her screeching as she came <laughs> over to say hello to me and ask me how my day was. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe if be she took a little forgiving. To... Be half as forgiving of Karen as you are of Donovan. Like, you know, yeah. Give Karen a break. Like, yeah. <laughs> lay off Karen. Uh, so <laughs> they have their first meeting, and Although, he's basically like, "I saved your life. You kind of owe me something," in a flirtatious way as well, which he brings up a ton. 
he she doesn't owe him anything Mm -mm. if someone saves your life that was their decision (laughs) and you don't owe them shit he wants like a thanks at one point too he's like what no thank you a thank you's nice yeah a little ass grabbing no. Well, but I mean, like, but she but she hadn't, like, said it at that point, and he out loud had to call her out for it. Like, oh, yeah. you can't even say thanks. I don't know. I like, even think if you save someone's he's... life saying, it, don't, aren't you going to say thank you? That's still an asshole move. Yeah? Even if I've saved your life, I'm not going to be like, oh. Uh, it's, I mean, it's one thing to save something? your life. It's another yeah. thing to, <laughs> to break into her house while she's, yes. like in a state of undress and be like and just appear upside down in your bedroom and be like no thanks and it's like Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. uh, another yeah. thing Spider-Man said all the time <laughs> what no thanks hey what no thanks <laughs> he is funny I get no respect yeah. and then he pulls his little Spider-Man collar spider collar spider collar spidey collar um, she goes to school. We meet her friend Karen. Uh, Karen alludes to sleeping with a teacher. Is that right? Yes. Oh yeah. She wants to flirt with Mr. Marks. Yeah. 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 There is a teacher that she's super into. Yeah. Oh, this ca- this chapter five news coverage version oh. one. Um, all of these are version one. Just to let you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it features my favorite character, Pete Vander. A witness to the break-in at Ricardo's jewelry shop. 40s, wife beater and robe. Grunts. Reporter talks to him for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and uh, he switches from somebody who would wear uh, the, what he's wearing into like a weird like British sea urchin or, or, or street urchin like character when he says, he asks him about turning over the video to the police. And then suddenly his tone is... Uh, yeah, I did. I caught some weird stuff on it. I did. And he has this like what? weird like he has this like weird way of speaking now. Like, How did you not read chapter. this with like a with like a northeast like dirtbag accent? Because he starts to be like, oh yeah, it was pretty weird. I guess <laughs> I I think I saw some bad guys over there. He's a chimney there. sweep now. Like, yeah, it's it's yeah, he's a chimney sweep. Pretty oh, okay. spelled P R E apostrophe apostrophe Y. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm being honest, I did skip over this part. There's throughout numerous news stories where crimes keep happening. The green out. slash keeps uh, saving things. I mean, if I can be honest, I I got the chapter 26 of this book, and I gave up. There's only 28. I can't believe I, it took that long. That's because I didn't. I'm not saying I stopped reading it. Okay, <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> I was defeated by this by this book. That's interesting because that was some like of my favorite running, parts. when you're running, if you're running in like a mi- like like a, like a like a marathon, and your body gives out at 24 miles, it's like, <laughs> what are the, those last two miles? That that doesn't mean anything. That's when my body gave out. <laughs> it wasn't a choice. It just happened. Yeah, my, I hit the wall. My legs went, and I was done. I, I read this whole thing sitting down, so I <laughs> that didn't happen to me. That's right. I was yeah running a marathon when that I was reading this. Yeah. was tiring you out. Shitting himself. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't tell her friends at school about it. She gets more uh, more visits from him, and she's in less and less dress each time she comes out of the shower, and he's just there. Uh, there's one part she's literally like, I grasp at my towel in fear, which was terrible. She says the words against my will a bunch of times. She says, like, she asked him to get out numerous times. His yeah. tone both worried and concerned me. <laughs> <laughs> one. It's like, well, that's it. um, I think they they were going for an aesthetic of like a Tony Stark type of dude, like a little snarky and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, kind of tells it like it is a bit, but it just comes off. And just this creepy. is where some of my expertise comes in. Tony Stark is not Superman or Spider Man. Whoa, he's huh. Iron Man. Whoa! Spoilers. We learned that in Spoilers. the second year. <laughs> second year of lesbian superhero <laughs> school. My yeah. sapphic sophomore year. Wow. That's, um, that's in great. their second meeting is when <laughs> the title of the thing comes into play. He does steal her panties. Uh, oh, because also at school she gets a note in her locker, and mm-hmm. it's a scary note. Forensics mm-hmm. expert, what did it say? It said, uh, "I you would I bet you would look good in red." Yeah, it was written in red ink. So she gets this evil note, and as the news stories progress, more and more girls are dying. So the thought is that there's a serial killer mm-hmm. in town who's going after the girls, and that this guy is going to help her. Um, yeah, so to assumption. help her, he says, show me the note. She says no because she's horrified of him. And he says, okay, I'll steal your panties uh, and you'll get them back when you show me the note. 
fun stuff. Reasonable. <laughs> oh, we also meet Josh, um, Avery's ex boyfriend of a year and a half, and perpetually drunk and high even at school. That's mm-hmm. so sad to me. Josh it really broke sad. my heart. This like teenage kid. I mean, he is also still harassing her, but yeah. like he's also he's he does I, I, I mean, we all knew Josh. Yeah. I don't think I knew I a knew, Josh. I mean, I knew Josh. I knew every character in this book. Yeah. Wow. Because you really blog. This <laughs> she it. does mention wearing an Ocean Didn't City. Change a single name. <laughs> She mentions wearing an Ocean City, New Jersey uh, t-shirt, so she might be from our area. Yeah, yeah this chick's from the Northeast, dude. Um, She's from Bucks County. <laughs> Wait, more and more. <laughs> can I disparage an entire county? Yeah. Yes, oh, that's uh, allowed. Sh- okay, she's from suburban Philadelphia. Nice, good cover mm, up. Specific. <laughs> um, her friend Karen is also suggesting that she go on a blind date with this guy Jake a lot. Uh, they go, he takes, they go on like a group date to the Olive Garden and he pays for everything. And I thought that sounded so cool. If I was in high school and one dude paid for all of us to go to the Olive Garden, that would be insane. Okay, I mean, well, that's, that's, why it's, says, that's why it's in the book. It's one of the yeah. best things I've Multiple ever read. <laughs> She Wouldn't that be amazing? Think about how hard it was in school. Who's going to pay for what? You know your friend who never pays enough. Like That should start it when we were all in high school. I'll buy you endless soup, salad, and that bread. That one said anything you want at Mary the Olive forever. Garden. Yeah. Everything you see before you is yours. <laughs> anything the fluorescent light touches, <laughs> it's yours. But oh. don't go into the shadow section. <laughs> and she's... She likes this guy, but she's clearly also liking Superman. And I'm like, go with Jake. Yeah. Oh, my God. He buys yeah. lots of apps He's, Yeah, that she likes. And yeah. his two favorite side dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgetting. Sorry, is that a oh, detail? Or are you giving us some She no. keeps bringing up how much food he buys. Mm. It's, it's several times throughout the, the book. Oh, they have a lot in common, too. Their favorite movie is the third Harry Potter. Oh, so here's a little point. Because I'm a forensics expert, I did some digging on this <laughs> kiss my oops person. Yeah. Okay, I found them on, on uh, uh, social media. Yeah. Uh, I know their real name. Yeah. I also know that they are a huge Harry Potter fan. And so this is a little bit of the author's wow. personal taste coming in. Oh. Didn't give it to the main character, gave it to Jake. So I found that to be an interesting yeah. choice. Hmm, mm, thank you. You're welcome. For that I'm also a you... literary expert. <laughs> a, for, a, a forensics literary wow. expert. Wow. Yeah. I also like the third Harry Potter movie a lot. That's The Prisoner of Azkaban, right? Yeah, yeah. that one's a great movie. Yeah, it really kind of gets into the darker side it's of dark. Harry it's Potter. No Superman, no Spider-Man, no uh, Iron Man. In Throughout that the though. entire film. Or, or the rest hmm. of the series, actually. Totally different. Very totally different thank God you're here. interesting. I would- <laughs> Uh, we got more bedroom visits. We get more death threats, uh, more girls being killed. It's a bit repetitive, more double dates. We can kind of fly through this stuff. We can move to then uh, one time when he comes to visit, uh, he's down in the, I was about to say lobby, on her lawn, <laughs> down in her uh, lobby lawn. <laughs> and he's like, come on, we're going to go for a motorcycle ride. And she's like, no, I don't want to. But of course, that means she's going to go do it. Uh, so she gets on the motorcycle <laughs> ride with this dude, and then they go to what sounds like a bat cave, and it's also referred to as a bat cave. Yeah, just it's, all over the place with. The I feel like I don't really have to touch on that one at all. It <laughs> seems like that's pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> it's lacking. Parent, that to, Superman does go to live in a bat cave. He d- he does, but he doesn't call it a bat cave. Got he it. Calls it a got Superman it. cave. Oh. Mm-hmm. I had an e- this was the point in the book where I had an easier time. I was like, maybe I'll start enjoying this more if I picture him as a villain instead of a superhero, because he's a little piece of shit all the time. He just bosses her around. He, he- does the come here motion with his finger several times in chapter twelve. Fucking makes me so mad. Yeah, I think chapter Give me twelve a break, dude, is also when I realized there wasn't going to be any sex in the book. So this is the second erotica that we've had that has had no sex in a row. Our apologies. We're going to make up for it this again. This is definitely young adult fiction rather than erotica. Yes, it's but non-sexual. Because just me. the things that were clearly supposed to be sexual, like that, or they comment on her crossing her legs about six times, and I was like, this must be very sexy to whoever wrote this, but it's. Not because that it's a, sexy it's, to grown ups. It's I high guess. school flirting, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, she wears shorts that say DTF on it that Karen got her. Like, yeah. 
her friend like you and know. he asks are you are you <laughs> no but that so was my bitch friend thing. just got me these Do, does the butt message well, that, match the mind that also yeah. leaves her that also <laughs> get, makes her innocent of having any sexual desire because she didn't buy shorts that said DTF because that would be something a slut would do so Karen her friend got it for her so yeah. she's a lot she's like I wore them because they're comfortable it says that shit like she makes so many excuses for well I mean I have I have a pair of shorts that say DTF and they're very comfortable <laughs> So, <laughs> who bought them for you? My shrill friend, Karen. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Karen also kind of, on that first date with Jake, is like, kind of threatens her, like, well, if if I can't set you up with Jake, I'll set um, this other girl up with him. Like, yeah. It just became like this weird bartering thing where it was like, wasn't even about like them liking each other. Yeah. It had nothing to do with their chemistry or their interest. Yeah, they just wanted to all split a check at, originally, Chili's and... Then Olive Garden. Let's they, not forget. Did Those they even get salsa. to go to Chili's? No, they didn't even get to go to Chili's. Oh, I love Chili's. That's a bummer. <laughs> Who doesn't like Chili's? Ah. Uh, uh, speaking well, of. Olive Garden was closer to the movie theater. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Oh, she goes back home. Uh, the guy drives her home after a long night out, and Grandma's like, where the fuck have you been? And so she's like, I'll make it up to you. I'll take you to Red Robin. <laughs> so they go to Grandma's Red like, Robin. You have. Use magic words. Uh, they have a weird game that they play with the waiter with the tip. They basically just play a game, do I deem you worthy enough to give you 20%? And the majority of the time is no, which I found so cruel. Yeah, this is one of the clues that this character or maybe even the author are a certain... Uh, are of a certain uh, political bent, <laughs> is what I'll say. Liberals? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, they have Fox News on in the background a lot. She listens um, to talk, she listens she to talk radio. She has some slurs that I don't even think we need to get into. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's ambivalent, a misguided Ambivalent writing. towards the Second Amendment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, when the guy hits her in the head with the gun afterwards, she's like, well, it's America. It's like, what? It's his yeah. right to have a gun, Karen. It's his right to hit me in the head yeah, with a gun. Yeah, but you shouldn't go carrying around guns like they're going out of style. Yeah, that is. But she's like, well, they are, if you ask me. I can't believe how much of this I've committed to memory. Yeah. You have a great mind. <laughs> a beautiful Wasted. mind. Wasted. A beautiful mind, even. Some would even say. It's beautiful. I loved your analysis of um, everything you've said so far. Thanks. I'm just sitting here like, this gal. She's so great. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, we have more visits from the mess man. One of my favorite scenes. Uh, so it's the first time that she finally seems a bit more on board with the green slash after their uh, back cave meeting. They're a little bit looser. He comes to visit her again. They talk about another note that has a razor in it. Her and that makes him think it's not connected to the other ones. Yes. That was very troubling to me uh, in all my years. <laughs> As a forensics expert, look, if the, I can't stress this enough. I'm going to find a camera here. Look, I can't stress this <laughs> yeah. enough. If you find two notes that are written in your room, they're connected. <laughs> okay, There's no world in which two different people are sending you notes. Okay, it doesn't matter if there's a razor blade in this one. There wasn't a razor blade in that one. Wait at least till the third one. Maybe there's a pattern. being. They're connected. They're connected. Thank hmm. you. It's just a matter of public safety is <laughs> why I'm this fired up about it. I remain I remain skeptical. <laughs> yeah. Fair because enough. there were different color inks. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're telling me one serial killer has two different pens? Very easily purchase a number of pens from any Walgreens, any kind of, any store that sells stationery. What? Anybody this, can walk up the If this was said a decade <laughs> earlier when, when gel pens were very popular and you had oh. like a handful in your bag, I could see that yeah. one person having several pens, but I feel like they'd fallen out of fashion by I then. I feel by 2011, the, those pens have fallen out of fashion. Even if the final note you find is like, Red, black, green, and blue, like all the, the one pen that had all wow. of the colors in it, and that mm. somebody pushed them all down and sure. wrote it with all of them, it's still connected. Mm. I just want to call it, and if you're listening, you can't see this, but I do have a. <gasps> oh! That just Whoa! blew my mind! A pen. Ryan's a murderer! Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. But it's <laughs> it's got black and red and green and I blue. I did not even see that in your hand before Whoa. I. Whoa! Wow. Or maybe I did. Maybe Incredible. my forensics brain is just so on fire all the time that I took note of it subconsciously without even... Wow. Notice. Wow. All these things And he only accurate. noticed when I r called attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and I only noticed it. 
Um, so there's more notes. Terrified. There is also more flirtation. So, so she, he often lies in her bed too. He makes himself very comfortable when he comes over. Takes her panties, this and that. In this one, they finally kiss, and she pushes him away, and she says. I'm cheating on someone who is going to be my boyfriend soon. Not and that's thing. why they can't kiss. Isn't that a crazy thing to say? I'm cheating on someone I'm not dating. Yeah, that's... Uh, I she's guess got I, guilt, dude. She's racked with guilt because these dudes are fucking... Like, in, they're like making her feel so bad about everything she does. She has hey. no agency. It sucks. Like, it, I mean... It sucks. It like, is like a horrible little glimpse into like the the life of the psyche of, of actual I mean, of an actual what, person. I think it was really hard because I was like, I remember being a high school kid and the shit that, yeah. And you I were remember like, liking boys who said gross ass shit like this to me and still still being attracted to them because you're still a teenage girl with like wild ass hormones and you're like, oh my god, I want to fuck. But the, all the guys around me talk mad shit to me and just like make me feel like garbage. Yeah, and it's because their dads. Talk shit to them. Yeah, and it's this echoing of trauma throughout. Yeah, yeah, oh, which is not to good say. to your daughter. You know, these are also <laughs> young boys who Saint think John that this Mayer. is like how you do talk. You know, they're not all inherently bad. What? what? <laughs> We're quoting, quoting Saint John Saint Mayer. <laughs> Saint Slohan Jr. <laughs> Um, Fathers, be good to your daughters. So they have your bodies this, a wonderland. This kiss is at least a little bit better because it's consensual. You know, everybody's on the same page, which I like about it. She tries to steal his mask, uh, and she gets it. But uh, just as she's about to see his face, Grandma catches them. She opens the door, and he like Spider Man's out, uh, and now she's in big trouble with her grandma. Uh, so that happens. <laughs> I don't even know if much comes of that. No. Then they she go to a different grounded. chain restaurant uh, and everything gets better. We do hang out with Jake a bit more and we also meet uh, his good friend Bentley, who is good friends with Josh, her drunk ex, yeah. is also good friends with Jake. Uh, and Bentley is a real piece of shit. Mm -hmm. He screams at her twice in the middle of school, you're a whore. And then Jake is like, oh, he's a cool guy. He's like a genius. He's just always smoking pot. If you date someone and your friend, they talk to your girlfriend like that, that's an issue. Yes. For sure. Even if it's your, not your girlfriend, but a, someone who's soon to be your girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not <laughs> official yet. Your, well, nascent, your nascent girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk to my soon to be girlfriend like that. <laughs> Um, he's terrible. And I bring him up because he comes up in the end. So basically more things happen. I think we can just yeah. jump to this big climax. Yeah. More notes come. Um, but the, oh, so then there's the party scene. We can get to the party scene because that's leading towards the end. Uh, she goes to a party. There's a game of truth or dare happening. She can't take truth because that's what, you know, uh, losers do. So she takes dare and someone dares her to jump off the roof naked. <laughs> Uh, and she agrees to this. She says, all right. And everybody runs outside. And she goes up to the upstairs be bedroom where she sees this guy from school who we forgot to mention this because we've been skipping She's been things. bumping into this She keeps boy. bumping into this mystery boy at school. who, But she never quite knows his name or knows what's up with him. He's always writing notes. and yeah. <laughs> <different places. laughs> They don't get to chat much. Literally like everywhere where she is. Well, it turns out that this boy is the green slash. Yeah. It's Tyler. It was discovered. He always calls her princess in the room, and that's how it's. he lets it slip in Tyler voice. Like, don't go out there, princess. She's like, wait a minute. Only a creepy man who comes <laughs> into my bedroom at night calls me princess. All the other men in my life yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> Only one calls me princess. They call me poor and slut. <laughs> and get in the back of my car so I can <laughs> unload so I can unload you. into you. Oh. Um... So she finds out that it's him. Uh, they go home and she gets another note. Roses are red, violets are blue. I expect you at 49 silver with your secret BF2. So there's a big final showdown. Uh, they go there and there's like a mob and gangsters there, like a big mafiosa boss who then like ties them up and is like, we know about you. We know you're the superhero and we murdered all of those girls to get to you. Isn't yeah. that so sad? And the mob boss's brother was the McDonald's psycho who held who held the gun to her head. Correct. So, don't, but don't we think that had the green slash slash Tyler not been so obsessed with Avery, he could have maybe saved those 
other girls. He's spending a lot of time with her. Well, that's, I mean, I think a dilemma that often comes up in superhero movies, no? It, yeah, and I think when you're, when, you're, when you are not that superhero, but you're that person's love interest, like you, you're sort of either knowingly or unknowingly signing yourself up to put up with all this shit and get yeah. one like, sliver of this person who like, can't or <laughs> won't share part of their life with you publicly because that puts you at risk or puts them at risk. Like Very often, like, that person's like, well, I can't, because the villains come after the people that are, that are close to you. Yeah. Terrible. That is accurate. Yeah. Like your Aunt Mays and your yeah. Mary Janes and Lois Lane. All the other Spider-Man. No, yeah. just Spider-Man. Oh, okay, okay. Please, thank you. <laughs> it's Superman after all. Um, Avery gets sassy with the mob people. And then basically in the next scene, the green slash is like, you need to shut up. You're ruining everything. <laughs> just let me handle it. Uh, so they escape. She escapes and run out. He's like, get out of here. I'll deal with them. Starts doing a little bit of fighting. We don't know what happened. She's nervous that her grandma isn't OK. But she decides to go to Donovan's first and eat cereal. Then she goes and checks on her grandma. Her grandma's safe. And written in her room is a note from the green slash, I'm OK. Yeah. And that's how our story ends. It's it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And in the end, everything was groovy. <laughs> um, so we did not get a chance to get to any erotica, uh, the, similar to our gritty of brotherly love. Um, but we didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so we took it upon ourselves to write some superhero erotica uh, some loosely based off of what we've read, some not at all. Um, would anyone like to start? I would be happy to start us off. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go if you do. If oh, you sure. can go first. Okay. Yeah, we could go down the line. All right. Anything we sh you should preface this with? or uh, This is a work of uh, fiction <laughs> using uh, Spider-Man as uh, its as the medium. So that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a title? It doesn't. Untitled. Untitled. Titled. Version one. As of yet. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> kind of just jumps right into the action. Uh, right. Mary Jane slid the Spider-Man suit off of Peter Parker's body. <laughs> when the red and blue mesh suit slid past his pelvis, it caused Peter's turgid member to bounce up and hit his stomach with a thwack. <laughs> <laughs> Thwap! That's good sound effects, yeah. right? For the head of Peter's penis was covered in the same trick. The head of Peter's penis <laughs> was covered in the same trichobothria that allow him to climb walls as Spider-Man. Trichobothria. So it, it's the little hairs on a. Uh, oh, Spider okay. Mm. Uh, so uh, he could climb a wall with it. Uh, so the, the head of his penis was covered in the same trichobothria that allow him to climb walls as Spider-Man, so it stuck to his skin when it made contact. Oops. This hasn't happened before. I must be very horny, Peter whispered. <laughs> Here, Mary Jane said breathily, let me get it. <laughs> Mary Jane pulled at Peter's pecker in vain. It's really stuck on there, huh? She said. <laughs> Laughing sheepishly, Peter replied, yep, it's stuck on there pretty good. Maybe if I twist it here, ah! And with that, the heat of the moment got the best of Peter, and he shot rope after rope of webbing out of his tumescent, protuberant penis. <laughs> One of the lines of webbing shot straight up to the blade of a ceiling fan spinning high above their heads. No. Peter suddenly found himself being propelled around the room by the force of the ceiling fan. MJ, help me, he cried, <laughs> before being knocked unconscious by the large oak hope chest that Mary Jane's grandmother had bequeathed her. Mary Jane attempted to corral la Peter's large limp body as it swung, attached only by his penis around the room, knocking over chairs, picture frames, and pretty much everything he came in contact with, but it was too hard, so she gave up and masturbated in the shower instead. Aww. The end? Le oh. Leaving him spinning around the room? Yeah, she left him just there. <laughs> and I like whoa, to imagine, whoa. which I can because I'm the author, uh -huh. uh, that things are now getting stuck to his body as he's, and so it's <laughs> like, just like, panicking, that game you know? where you roll around Katamari. Yeah. yeah, he's Katamari. Mm, yes. Beautiful. That was great. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, much for sharing. Thank you so much. So horny. Okay, <laughs> mine is, yeah, inspired by um, the book. Good night, little designer, Tim Gunn said, as he kissed <laughs> Jessica on the forehead. Tim Gunn had raised Jessica ever since her parents died in a horrible cancer car crash explosion. 
Now she was a sexy, sweet 32-year-old orphan looking for her place in the world. (laughs) Tim Gunn turned off the lights and closed the door, but Jessica couldn't sleep. She tossed and turned, wondering if her Superman would appear again tonight. Just when she had given up hope, a flicker of light appeared in the corner of her room. The flicker turned into a circle, and a man appeared within it. Doctor Strange, the sexy superhero who had visited her the night before with her enthusiastic consent. Enthusiastic consent was super important and very sexy to Jessica. It really got her off. Hello, Jessica, he said sexily. Ready for another trip through time and space, he winked. You bet, Jessica replied. Damn, she thought. Knowing we're on the same page means we're really going to go to town on one another. We just have to be quiet, or my grandfather, Tim Gunn, will wake up. (coughs) Oh, I'll be quiet, but I can't promise you will be. He used his portal magic to pop from the corner (laughs) of the room to Jessica's bed. Jessica leaned in to kiss him, but he pulled away smiling. Suddenly, she felt a caress on her back. She turned around to see his magical cape waving in the wind. Mind if I tie you up first? Fuck. Just the just the question alone. Uh, just the question alone almost made her come. God, did she love consent? She nodded yes, and in a flash, her hands were tied to the bed frame above her head. Doctor Strange proceeded to pull down Jessica's panties. He did his little portal magic around her womanhood and stuck his tongue inside. My God, she screamed. She had never felt anything like this before. Doctor Strange was eating out the fourth dimension of her clitoris. (laughs) After an appropriate amount of time, she came. Just the sight of her coming made him come. It was awesome. <laughs> wow. Finn. Finn. An appropriate amount of time. <laughs> After an appropriate amount of time. Um, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Beat up those walls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> okay, mine is titled. Uh, <laughs> mine is titled Superman Really Stole My Panties, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's seven pages long. <laughs> <laughs> it's continued on both sides. Uh, tell me what you want, Boy Scout. I don't have all night. Bruce whispered into Kal-El's ear. Kal-El was impressed. <laughs> Even with his enhanced hearing, Cal had not detected Bruce as he sneaked up behind him. Cal supposed that the Dark Knight must have answered Gordon's bat signal a hundred times before. He must have memorized every gable and gargoyle that adorned the roof of the Gotham City Police Headquarters. Mm. Whoa! The The caped crusader could scale the building in secret, but he could not conceal the urgency, the need from his breathing. Batman exhaled hot and quick on Superman's neck. I'm returning these, Cal held up the black bat panties loosely an inch from his Kryptonian (laughs) nose. In the pale moonlight, the sable Kevlar briefs looked almost blue. Kale took his last chance to breathe in the scent of them before Bruce snatched them away. Superman spoke without moving a muscle. Are you wearing your kryptonite ring, Bruce? The closer I am to you, the weaker I am in the knees. Bruce who? The name's Batman. (laughs) (laughs) The name's Batman. (laughs) The name's Batman. Oh, right. Which is the true disguise? Bruce, Batman, you can deceive Gotham, but I know who you really are. What you really want, I know you better than you know yourself. Faster than a speeding bullet, Superman spun and pulled Bruce, pulled himself into Bruce. <laughs> Batman's legs wrapped around the Kryptonian's crotch. Their hands searched under one another's capes, grasping urgently. Spandex-clad cock throbbed against spandex-clad cock. Their, ga- their gasping mouths inches apart. Okay, sorry. Wow. Like really Whoa. sweating. So that's, hold on, hold on, almost done. So that's why they call you the Man of Steel, Bruce grunted. So that's why they call you the world's greatest detective. Hours later, they ate breakfast at Friendly's. Yay! <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, <laughs> I loved hey, all that. That was, this was great. Hey, I wrote it after two glasses of wine and reading this blog. The sexy <laughs> identity oh, crisis. Yeah. Very sexy. Uh, mine is a little light on superhero stuff. That's Whoa. okay. I don't know why. You don't want to mix work with pleasure. Right. Yeah. Well, this one does. Oh. Um, uh, so, so some of the erotica I've read in my life has been very short because I don't have time for as much erotica as we all just read. Yeah. Um, and some of the details for gay erotica are like 
men in very desperate situations. So it starts out, it's just like... It's, like dangling from a cliff? No, like someone who's very lonely and like pining <laughs> for a... Every gay erotic is <laughs> help me! <laughs> exactly. Um, <clears throat> so I'll read this little thing. It's called The Summer of 69. <gasps> It was the summer of 2007. I, <laughs> I had just graduated and landed my dream job, toll booth operator. It was lonely, but quiet. <laughs> and I loved to take naps and dream. That's why it was my dream job. One day, a handsome but sexy man drove through. It wasn't a memorable exchange. He handed me some coins and I waved him through. That would be the only exercise I got all summer, or so I thought. <gasps> An hour later, the same man drove through in the same direction. When he saw I was just even a little bit confused, he explained, I'm a time traveling superhero, Gus. I'm doing like this weird complicated mission and I messed it up the first time so I'm driving back through. I still only brought the same change, but I already gave it to you. Can you just <laughs> use that and wave me through? If you do, I'll come back and we can boink sometime. <laughs> we can boink. boink. This time you had, travel is handled perfectly, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. You had me at boink sometime, I said, and <laughs> waved him through. <laughs> Over the next two and a half months, my hero teleported back to my booth, and we had a lot of sex. One time, uh, one time each time he visited. They were short, but to get us both in the mood, he would recant where he'd just been, fighting villains and bad guys from future, from history or future history. But he said I could just call that the future. Um, <laughs> I was on the clock and getting railed at the same time. Plus, <laughs> what could be better? Plus, it was a really sexy secret, and I couldn't tell anyone if I wanted to. It was just me in the toll booth. I also decided to live in the downtown where rent was unbelievable, let me tell you. <laughs> so I worked overtime, nights, and weekends, which only gave me more time to wait around for my hero. He would never tell me when he was coming, and neither would I. Ooh. Although he did keep asking for a heads up on that. <laughs> One time we tried to 69, but I was tired from barely moving most days, and he was tired from fighting Germans. The last time I, <laughs> the last time I saw him, he had just traveled back from the past. He said he went back to console a grieving Mary Todd Lincoln. He, w he was gentle, too, and handsome and sexy. The last time I saw him, it was our 69th meetup. Oh. The next, oh, the summer of 69! Yeah. The next day, I was fired. They, <laughs> they had a camera in the booth, I guess, and finally checked it. <laughs> they said, normally, almost nothing happens, and they have a really hard time finding someone to work the job where they watch all those tapes. But I'll always have those memories. And the tapes. We watched them in my court hearing. Now here we are, the summer of 2008. I'm in a jail cell, all alone. Probably no cameras. I think I need to see the optometrist soon, but I can't right now. I'm in jail. I'm still waiting for him to come see me from one of his heroic adventures. Come to think of it, I don't even know his name. But he'll always be my hero. Wasn't it Gus? Or wait, it was Gus. Ow! <laughs> I forgot because it happened over a year ago. <laughs> I sighed and reached my hand into my prison pants and said, Oh, Gus. Oh That's my all. god. Oh my god. I love that in that story there was like the manager of like the toll booth was like watching normally there's nothing going on in these videos, but we have <laughs> seventy consecutive <laughs> visits <laughs> where you're having sex in the booth. <laughs> Come to think of it, that's like almost like three months. So it was like yeah. almost every day, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty good. An entire, the whole summer. Yeah. Ryan, that was incredible. Yeah, it was very <laughs> thank moving. you. Very it was epic. Uh, it was a huge proportion. Yeah. I did write it very fast. So it thank you. It honored what we read, mm -hmm. uh, but you really, you know, brought yourself into it too, which made it so special. Yeah. Thank, um, you. thank you all so much for writing those. They were truly beautiful. <sighs> Um, at the end of each episode, we like to rate the book that we've read, mm -hmm. uh, one being a drought and five being slip off your chair. Um, Wait, what was the? Slip off your chair. Oh, You're so it. wet that you <laughs> slip Got it. Off. From all the juice. Yes. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Or if you're Spider Man, I guess uh, everything sticks to you. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So are you, it could be that chair. as well. Stuck to your chair or okay. slip off your chair. Um <laughs> If anyone would like to start, I gotta give it like a like a two. You know, it's not like an instruction manual 
like a one, like for for an instru- I should say like for like a VCR or something like that. Like it didn't, you know. I don't know, man. A, a two, a two. Yeah, this hurts you yeah, so what much. Is, what's going I don't on even want it. Like I, because I see the effort and what she. I see her what she wanted to do and her her capabilities. I think are there. Yes. Yeah, I love that part. I love this girl. I love that she did something creative with her time. It seems like a lot of people enjoyed it. One of the most endearing things about the book was after every chapter, she would write a little something at the bottom that was like, so excited everybody's reading it. The comments Uh, were so supportive. And all the comments are so supportive. I I love that about it. Yeah, it was very, it helped me like, Get through some things. Yeah, it's not for me. It just it's not personally effort. sexy to me, but I really think the effort is. You know what? That's great. a great point. That it's not necessarily, it may not be for you. It's yeah. not but for a 32 mean, year old right. woman. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Would anybody else like uh, to share? I give this a zero. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I was very disappointed Without that there was no hesitation. actual sex in it. Uh, no, I'll give it a one because of the effort, whatever mm-hmm. that is, like, like slightly. Uh, intrigued, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a drought, but I'm like, oh, there's something happening. Yeah, uh, yeah. A for effort, but I hope that I hope uh, that Kiss My Oops is like still writing and has gotten better. I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. I bet she is. Yeah, I, w- I want to give it a, a two also, despite not uh, ha- featuring a lot of sex or any sex. Um, <laughs> but like, no. it was very layered, and there were a lot of details that I did want to see kind of come back. And they don't didn't always like. Like early on, she's like, "Oh, Donovan was sexy because this chain." And when I asked him about it, he said he got it from his brother as a birthday gift. And two weeks later, his brother died. And I was like, "That's how I don't know if that's sexy, but I thought it would like come back lit." But there were a lot of like yeah. little details Seeds that like planted. it feels like there's a lot going on. Yeah, in, I thought in a Jake was going to sure. turn out being bad because he was so good the whole time and so great. But he's just a great guy that she doesn't end up with, which sometimes happens in life. So maybe there's something beautiful to that. Yeah, but. Oh, I think we forgot to mention Bentley was in the Mafia as well and was also in the fight. It's also a very (laughs) dense book. I get the feeling that she was writing this kind of like off the top of her head. Like as she was writing, it was just like sort of uh, free, like what's what's the word? Stream of consciousness. Yeah, Yeah. when Tyler is revealed, she was kind of like, well, that's who it is. Yeah. Uh, In a way that was kind of like, I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, she discovered it in that moment too. Yeah. Yeah. But there were a lot of ideas and I think like yeah. that's not that's not nothing. Even if it's right. like a, like too much going on at times. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to give it a 1.5. It was it was a difficult read, but I appreciate it. Uh, almost reading like a bit of a, I guess, a fantasy journal of mm. it, it like encapsulated what it was kind of like to be in high school in a way that was very vulnerable and I really mm. appreciate this person's yeah. vulnerable vulnerability that they shared with us. A superpower, you might say. Oh. One of the hey. It is a superpower. Wow. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 It is like that. Uh, thank you so much for listening to Erotic Book Club. We have next time's assignment. We are going to be reading Sharing Samantha. Uh, by Madison Fay, and you can find that on Amazon. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you to thank all you of our here. guests. And I yeah. hope, thank yeah. you to our special co-host. It was so fun doing it with you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and um, have a very sexy week. I know I will. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's Jess. If you like college humor and to support us, sign up for Dropout. For the low price of a quirky pair of socks that show off your fun side per month, you'll get videos like this a whole week sooner. To chat with us live on the Dropout Discord, and exclusive content like the latest episodes of the Erotic Book Club podcast. There's this scene where she eats a cantaloupe. Oh my and it gets God, me. It's I hot. Like it. It's really yeah. hot. Sign up for your free trail today. Trial. That was a typo. I don't have any trails to give away. I wouldn't even know how to go about doing that. I buy land, I guess. Oh, God.